Hey, great to be here. Hello, everyone. Uh, we have created more data in the past five years than in the past 5,000 years. Have you ever heard that? Could you believe it? So when I was asked to come up with Planet of the Apps and a real list of apps that are out there that I've come across over the years, I had to kind of look at it and think, how are we going to do that? If I was to focus, you may have heard of a presentationist. You may not have heard of presentationist. If you were going to focus on it, then really this is what I'm trying to achieve. This is my objective today. What do you see here? For example, what do you think this is, for example, yeah? At events. Is that a typical event? The audience quite engaged. They're not looking at the phones, are they? Normally we see people, you go into a meeting and you see people with their heads down looking at the phones or switched off. So we look at some of the precedents and some of the problems. So we're trying to help you improve your communication and create a better engagement level for, at events. Um, born in Belfast, 1968, you might be able to hear that Belfast accent if I go back to my Belfast accent. So I was kind of focused on uh, presenting and if I talk about Belfast accent it's very quickly and that's the way people talk and nobody really knows what I'm talking about. So I had to learn how to talk a little bit slower and slow down a little bit and really focus on trying to project my voice. So I kind of learned to focus and slow it down. My father worked for the BBC so it was natural that somehow I'd end up in media. So I was brought up around camera cranes and going on outside broadcasts and working in radio and television over the years. So I worked on lots of different areas over that time. Um, Middle East dragged me along there, went over to see Dubai, what Dubai was like in 1992, and thought, yeah, this is going to be an interesting place. And suddenly 20 years went by and two kids and a wife and kids. So yeah, it all happens pretty quickly. But I went to a lot of different events over those years and worked in the events industry throughout the Middle East. One of the things, if you've ever worked in that area, is the latest technology at the last minute is really important. So learning to be agile, which is a word I've heard today, but learning to move really quickly, which is I'm sure some of you in the events industry will find out, is that you need to move real quick. You, you know, you might only get a few days. Sometimes we get people coming to us to make a presentation and we've only got a few hours. So how can we move quickly and do things quickly? And I wanted to maybe focus on that today as well. Um, so we ended up making a huge amount of content for a huge amount of companies over those years. Yeah. So I wanted to give you the feedback from that and going to events and seeing it as we go along. If you look at some of these numbers, you'll see we have a massive opportunity to improve in our market. On the left hand side, you see that 350 presentations go on every second somewhere in the world. And I assure you, 99% of them are terrible. <laughs> if we can just simply do it a little bit better, then people are going to be a little bit more engaged. Yeah? On the right-hand side, a huge amount of people want to engage and connect with other people when they come to meetings and events. But do we really give them the tools to do that? So maybe we could practically try that today. So we'll come on and have a go at that in a moment. You've heard of disruption. Disruption seems to be a buzzword at the moment. There are some other buzzwords. You got any other buzzwords in your industry? Packaging and unpackaging. That seems to be what people are doing these days. Let's, let's unpackage that, shall we? So we're going to unpackage the events industry today, and we're going to disrupt things. And I have to disrupt things, because if I start off and say, well, look, today's agenda is that we're going to make better presentations. How do you all feel? Do you like me? <laughs> no. You hate me, yeah? You absolutely hit me. You know I'm going to read all of those things and I'm going to step down through them. So presenters standing up and reading their slides is number, one of the number one mistakes we see people making. So I work with presenters to try and create more engaging presentations, trying to engage the audience more, which is one of the reasons why I'm standing down here. I'm not standing up there because I'm with you guys. I believe that the audience are the focus, that what we need to focus on. If I put a spinning animate a GIF in the corner of my slide, what does it mean? If I put a reflection under a PowerPoint slide with a white picture, uh, a, a picture on a white background, what does it mean? It means I chose the default and I don't care. That's what it means to people. So we need to learn, I'm from Belfast and there's enough bullets there already, so we're teaching people to ban the bullet, yeah? So there's enough bullets in the world, so we actually need to get rid of bullet points. So maybe we can look at that as well in this session and see what we can do to improve that. We have a massive problem because, you know, this guy's not suffering death by PowerPoint, but he is asleep at the back of a 400-person event in Dubai in the Creekside Hotel. 
and I went down and snapped a picture of him. And why is he asleep? I mean, why would you be asleep at an event? He has one of our voting keypads in his hand, and uh, <laughs> when we asked him to vote, uh, he woke up and voted and then went back to sleep. Now, what's interesting is there are 400 people in front of him. It's a large blue chip company. And when introduced to go up on stage, he shook himself and went up on stage. He is a CEO of a company asleep at the back of his own event. That's how unengaged he is. This lady came all the way from Texas to an event in Dubai and brought her own entertainment. I went to her and said, Excuse me, are you this man's wife? Did he sneak you in here? And she said, no, hell no. I'm from Texas, honey. I came all the way from Texas, paid $7,000 to be sitting here. And I said, why would you bring your own knitting? And she said, it's so goddamn boring, these things. These conferences are so boring. So it was kind of, those are some of the tipping points where I thought we have to change this. We have to get better. Because no matter where you look, there is boredom. There is sheer boredom. There is errors. There are people who have had enough. And you go... You don't have to go very far to see some of the faces and to recognize some of the challenges that are going on. Uh, generally, when we go, I mean, this is uh, probably one of my favorite. You can, recognize, you can recognize that. You can recognize that. It's a hard time. Maybe you travel far. You know, you, it's, t it's hard. It's hard to be out there. This is the formula that most people use when they work on a presentation or an event. I mean, they, they tend to work at the content, and they tend to look at trying to make it, and they try to leave it to the last minute. So we need to try and improve that. We need to add in a missing factor which is you guys yeah the audience are key yeah from the moment you arrived yesterday you started to make a judgment on this event how was your registration mine was wonderful arrived flashed my barcode bing and i came so well done to the team from event solutions you know there you've got a, a key solution you've got something that works and i'd like to bring them in maybe later talk about attendify and how what we're using so we want to look at some of what's out there and what are the right solutions to put the event together and are we really allowing people to network in 2010 with spot me we created an unconference in dubai we spent 30 million dirhams on it one of the largest events that ever took place in the middle east an unconference where people could go anywhere and move dynamically through it and we had this device which everybody got we lost 80 of them there were 1800 brought from switzerland and it was a device that you actually got and was a smart badge and you could search and find other people and triangulate where other people are this is in 2010 we have still not got back to there eight years later we're still trying to do the same thing on our, on, our, on our phones can we network and find out who else is in the room can we do that now do you know how to do that maybe we can we're still working on improving it and what about creating gamification or learning let's look at some of the ways that we can maybe help the audience get more engaged by forcing them to to engage this is an interesting fact from mark mccrindle who's one of the australian business meetings producers last year it scares the hell out of presenters see for all too long we've had the presenters as being the godlike people who st stand up on stage and impart one-way information they monologue to us they don't dialogue. Interaction is the difference between monologuing and dialoguing. If we can dialogue and create a dialogue, then it makes it so much more engaging. So please feel free today, shout out. This is a workshop, whatever you want to focus on. And I'm going to use a technology to do that. What did I just do? That was my top left hand few slides. What, is, what am I using here? Does anyone recognize it? A very unused feature of Microsoft PowerPoint called Microsoft section zoom it's built into every one of your powerpoints you don't use it yeah so when you go into the slide sorter view you can section up your presentations into the different areas you can then grab microsoft or logitech spotlight which is the product i'm using here and i can control my mouse and move around and click on the next section that i want to zoom in on just go to insert zoom in powerpoint it's right built into powerpoint so everything i'm telling you today is free you can take it away with you. It's not in the, the central app. I've also created a little app for myself, and that's it down there, aalive.mobi. That's an app for ourselves. So if you want any of the content from today, please feel free to download it from there, and you can grab all the information. You can also ask us some questions or make any comments. Um, just I'm trying just a, a different solution to you. And you can also see the speaker profile, and you can also give us some feedback if you like as well. So just to show you another type of solution. 
So we'll come back to this. I mean, there's a couple of comments that people have made um, already. I get that we want to cheer the Crusaders. Well done. Yeah, we do. And I'm sure there's a whole bunch of people outside doing it, but we can come back to that. Grab LinkedIn right now and try something with me, will you? Just to show you how technology and apps are out there and we're not using them. If you go to LinkedIn and you go down to the bottom left-hand corner, My Network, yeah, open up LinkedIn. And you go to the bottom left-hand corner, My Network. What do you see in the middle at the top? Find Nearby. Do you see it? So up in the... You see up at the top, find nearby. Now, you click on that and it may ask you to turn on Bluetooth, but you could probably risk it. It won't hurt that much. Find nearby and we immediately start to get a list of people who are in this room. So, hi, Sasha. I'm connecting with you. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Julia. Hi, Susan. Hi, Tiana. So, you see that it's simply, and it's built into LinkedIn and nobody uses it. George, Robin. Anthony, Alex, and you can start connecting with like-minded people. Built into LinkedIn app, and nobody uses it. Why? Why does nobody use it? Do they, these, Microsoft are constantly developing new features in PowerPoint, and no presenters use it. Why? They don't constantly upskill themselves. They don't learn what's out there and what's around. So you should immediately start seeing who else is in the room and who's sharing their Features. That's a great way to connect with people for business networking. You could use it. You can connect with people. Yeah, do you think so? Yeah, so at least you learned one thing right away. Good. So that's a little bit about, about you guys and about what, what we're focusing on. Just a couple of other things you can focus on on, on, the, um, on the content. I mentioned PowerPoint. Look, I've tried Prezi. I've tried Haiku Deck. I've tried Bunker. Any other suggestions? Google Slides, Keynote, tried everything, right? But there are 450 million install base of Microsoft PowerPoint for Office. So why would you try to change to another format? You can try it by all means, but if you need to use PowerPoint in another way, then you need to keep upskilling about it. And th these are some of the new features in PowerPoint, such as Designer, so Zoom is something I just showed you. The zoom allows you to zoom around and move in. So insert and zoom, summary section or slide zooms. So you can zoom from one slide to another one. Anyone from Microsoft here? Anyone from Microsoft Marketing? Could you tell us please about this new stuff? Because we'd love to know more about it. So zoom is something I certainly recommend. Um, how about designer or quick starter? A blank slide is a tough way to begin a report. Now you'll find Quick Starter when you open PowerPoint. Type in a subject. Quick Starter can help you build an outline and discover more about your topic. You'll need to do the research, but Quick Starter finds subtopics to start the ideas flowing. Just choose which ones you want. Pick a look that you like. You can always change it later. Look what's here. A table of contents slide, and those subtopics are now sections. They're there you go. PowerPoint makes the slides for you actually makes the presentation for you, designer designs it for you. You don't have to do anything. You can create stuff like this. This is a PowerPoint slide. Here's a video playing. Let's kick it off. There's a video playing in the background. And now we've got the helicopter line banner coming across with the helicopter. Much more engaging content by using video and using backgrounds and video as a background, built into every PowerPoint. What about creating some interaction? Here's a donut on the side. If I move over to some of the areas that I want to focus on, for example, click on the West Coast, then it moves down to that section. So using interaction, because you might be doing this in a coffee shop or you might be standing up on stage at an event, but you're going to create more engaging content by making the presentation look better. What about 3D? 3D just came recently into PowerPoint. You can actually have three-dimensional objects. So for medical, for real estate, for anyone in construction, you can now actually zoom in and move things around with three-dimensional objects within PowerPoint. So that's making the content more engaging. If you can make the content more engaging, the audience are going to enjoy it better. So we want to ban the bullet point and make it de generally more interesting. You can try some of the other solutions. Here's a solution from 10Touch um, called Vidra. 
and this is a storyboarding app, and it kind of builds it out for you and puts it together. Myself and my daughter made this little video on the beach in Sri Lanka in 10 minutes. Did you know there's 30 million presentations going on every day in the world? With so many choices, what software will you choose? Here's our top five tips for better presentations. Don't leave your presentation to the last minute. Plan ahead. Engage your audience by using their mobile phones. Crowdsource your content. Pick three simple ideas to tell in your story. Power on Twitter and give them a hashtag. These are just some ideas for a winning presentation. So that's just a, how you can knock something together really quickly. I don't think she really knew what she was saying, but she said it. Uh, you can actually hear the horns beeping on the Sri Lankan road in the background. So grab, seize a moment, make a video, put it together. That's what you can do with stuff like Prezi or some of the others. We tend to use Prezi for mind mapping and for making presentations. What other features have you found nice about it? A anyone used it before? Anyone had good experiences, bad experiences? No one used it? No, not really. It is a zooming tool. It allows you to create zooming-like animations. Here's something we made for one of our Dubai uh, clients or Abu Dhabi clients. Um, there are a lot of work going on with it to really make it better. They're coming up with something called Prezi Next, and it's going to look a lot like kind of easier to build it slide-based. But where does the concept of slides come from? From 35 millimeter slides, yeah. From that thing you used to put on top of a slide carousel. So how do you, you know, we've been dealing with it long enough. We've got to improve. This is, runs on a canvas and you move the camera around. Just be careful with some of the zooms and moves. Yeah, you can end up with what we call audience nausea where everybody has to have a sick bag, yeah? Especially if you've got a big screen. So be careful with some of the movements that we've seen in it. Haikudeck. Um, we love Haikudeck, uh, haikudeck.com, beautiful way of making really interactive slides. Again, it has AI built into it, so you type in the word dog and it starts putting pictures of dogs in there for you. So great if you're presenting from an iPad or if you're working from you know, something that we want to, want to be mobile. Although don't underestimate PowerPoint for mobile, it's brilliant as well when you put it together. So, look, those are just by no means an exhaustive list, just a few ideas. There's also Powtoon. But here's where you can find out more information for this stuff. Our go-to place for, really, for, for all this stuff is the presentation podcast. I spent two hours listening to it on the way up here yesterday, and they go through some of the best features. So if you want to focus in on that, then that's really one of the best ways to do it. Um, just looking at how we meet, and moving on to away from content to how we meet and the time we have left, these are just 12 ideas that are on our website, different ways to meet. And these are really the function of a lot of our clients. So there are 12 Arabic ladies who work in uh, RTA, the NZTA equivalent in Dubai. And they came up with the concept of putting one of the CEOs in a seat on the stage. And everyone votes which CEO goes to sit in the seat. And the spotlight is on him, and it's the confession chair. And they ask him questions, tough questions he has to ask, answer, like, what does your mother call you? Ba, ba, boo, boo, bee, bee, or whatever, and, they, and the word comes up. They came up with that idea. And it's essentially Graham Norton's big red chair, essentially, is what it is. And they came up with the idea. And we thought, well, that's great. I mean, that's much more engaging than a plenary event. And I wanted to touch on a couple of these just to show you what you can do if you change an event. So first and foremost, you have to add some media in, obviously. There are too many millionaires in the Middle East, so we had to make an event called Who Wants to Be a Billionaire? As a, what is a million? A million is nothing. Give me one billion, only. Not that every Arab speaks that way, but that is my Arabic accent. But a billion actually bites is what most people want, so just a, just a flash drive. So the point here is you don't have to win a big prize. It can be just a simple prize. Here we put all our efforts into the production of the event, yeah? So we spend a lot of time and effort on the look and the feel of the event. People were very engaged. We use a university because the prices are generally cheaper and the parking is good, yeah? So, you know, reasonably priced, yeah, to, to run an event. Um, and people really didn't see any, but they felt like they were going to uh, almost like a game show, a television game show. So it felt like a TV game show. They had to know the answers to questions before they arrived and they were asked the questions, serious questions about the business. And then they came up on stage, they had a buzzer round for the last round and somebody won. And that's just the crew. So you want to see 
One particular character is this gentleman. I'd like to introduce him to, to him. His name is Ahmed, and he's an older gentleman who had three people that worked for him. And he was invited along to this, what he thought was going to be a meeting in the day. But at the end of the day, he won the main prize, and this is what he was doing. So that's the marketing team, and there's Ahmed. And there's his team. And they are having fun. They were going to a meeting. And this is what ha happened. I mean, it, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't want this, then don't use gamification. This is what gamification does to events. Yeah? And I've seen it in the good and the bad. And I've done a lot of good and bad types of events. And if you want to know more about this, then I'll talk to you about it later. But I have done such an event in an Arabic country uh, for Viagra, and it, uh, it worked very well. My, my kids are currently running around Cromwell with a Viagra football, and uh, there's a few, they get a few strange looks, but we've kept those footballs. They're great. Uh, the concept of the football, by the way, is that it was the World Cup and stuff like that, and obviously a soft football doesn't kick, doesn't go as far. So there were a lot of... Everybody got a very, very well-pumped, very, very hard football, which you can kick very far. So that was the idea there. What about Pecha Kucha? Which I have to be careful because you, you have to own the rights to use Pecha Kucha. But Pecha Kucha Nights, Ignite Nights, there are different ideas. This is two-way gamification at the Arabian travel market. Each presenter is coming up and presenting to Pecha Kucha, which is 20 slides in 20 seconds. The audience are loving it because they're going to win a prize in the Maldives if they get the answers right. So a really good prize. And you can see that they're also going to vote on which of the three or four presenters were the best. So even in an organization, you could run Pecha Kucha meeting formats, and it would have a major impact. There are some others called Ignite or some, some other ones as well. Where do you find out more about this? Well, you go to the MDI, Meeting Design Institute. Yeah, is one of the great, best places to, to find out more about meeting architecture. Um, and also, we've had some amazing presenters this morning, and I've been gifted a book. So there are meeting design elements. Also, there is the, the event manager blog. And please shout out if anyone knows of any other places as well that we should go. Um, there are some of the other areas. When we stand up and deliver things, we can really look at some different elements to that as well. Is anyone aware of what I'm using, what I have in my hand here? This is Logitech Spotlight, an amazing tool for presenters, allows us to push and create a spot on the screen. The AV guys love it because if you've got multiple screens going on, then they aren't just laser pointing onto one screen. So Spotlight, it also controls the volume and I can also do custom keystrokes as well so I can jump back to my first slide if I want to. So it truly makes presentations interactive. It's Bluetooth as well, so really simple and straightforward. A mm -hmm. little bit expensive. What about these guys, presenters, trying to get your presenters to sound better and to talk better? Let me introduce you to these two guys. What age do you think they are? Millennials, yeah, okay, who realized that they could build an app and give it away, which coached people on how they speak, on their voice quality. And that's what they did, or I. Two of them. There's one called Arai and there's one called Ummo, and this is what they do. talk about disruption it's just changing the whole way people you know present you can stand in your own room practice on your own device and get feedback from it help them out and buy buy some stuff will you because they're giving it away free at the moment I don't know how they go through all the development process and then give it away they, so uh, either um, don't be afraid to spend a dollar with them because it's like a, a dollar seems a lot of it seems a lot of value for a dollar or I is also very good as well the other one I enjoyed from last year was what we call digital trade stand. How many of you ever created a trade stand and kind of vinyl wrapping, etc.? This is for Dale at 2017. The entire stand is pretty much LED. So the whole trade stand is co coated in LED. And what do you think they're playing on it? Videos? PowerPoint. PowerPoint running on a trade stand. Instantly changeable connected to Twitter feeds, so live information coming through all the time. So a totally immersive environment using digital design. 
And that's really how we see kind of trade stands and events changing as well. So the backdrop here would become completely um, video. Yeah, and that's what, what we're seeing. In fact, some of the venues, if you book into some of the venues in Dubai, you get a free LED wall. The entire back wall is LED. And in fact, what they do is they take your business card and they go over to a scanner and they scan it, and all of a sudden the entire room is lit to your company colors. And the LED comes up and it comes up with your, your scanner. It's all built in to the room as part of getting the room. If you can't do that, consider these guys, Igloo Vision, based over in the UK in Brighton. Love their concept. They'll ship you an igloo, a 3D immersive igloo, 7 meter, 12 meter, 27 meter. It's using the same pop-up stuff that you see for a trade stand. And they also have engineered the engine, which allows it to project completely uh, around the circumference. So 360 degree projection. Yeah, and you can have an immersive tunnel that people could walk through as you go through it. Has anyone ever tried it? Everyone, if you've ever tried to build one, believe me, you'll be happy to, to find out about this. This is rental, so they ship it from one side of the planet to the other. It comes in boxes, you assemble it, and you've got a walk-through environment. Currently being used at the Louvre down in Abu Dhabi for an immersive environment. Um, how many times would you love to have an immersive 360-degree projection? Um, and now it's possible just by bringing them together. So I really enjoyed that. Where do you find out more about delivery stuff? Well, these are our kind of main areas we go to, just a couple of websites. So Toastmasters are in trouble. Any Toastmasters in the room? With things like, oh, hi, hi, I'm the president down at Queenstown. Anything that's, you know, any, we're, people are loving things like RI and OMO because we generally coach people on presenting, but now we can give them direct feedback. So professional speakers up in Auckland are a great group if you're serious about the business of public speaking. Yeah, so Jason, get up there, yeah. Okay, I expect you to be, you, you're already doing it here? They're, they're in Christchurch, and they're a great bunch of guys, so you can work with them. Interaction generally with audiences. Um, look, these things are not dead, okay? We recently ran an event for Kiwi Wealth, and the entire room were boomers. So what do you do with a room full of boomers? Yeah, do you get, tell them to open up an app? What do you do with a room full of kids? NYLD, what, how do you get them engaged? Yeah, you don't ask them to open an app. You don't want them bringing an app. But if you've got a room, room full of baby boomers, you better be giving them technology that works. And this is a completely closed system, radio frequency, hand out keypads and engage people. Ask the sort of questions that Jason was asking this morning, getting people involved, vote into a group, and away you go. You've seen Catchbox, I don't need to talk about it too much, but it's a throwable microphone that's branded that you can throw around. Again, trying to create more engagement. And the events industry needs more of that sort of stuff. Generally, we need it. Uh, Meeting Pulse is a very simple way of connecting with people and asking. What I love about it is that it's got a pulse in it. So you've got happy, sad, a bit like when you go through the, the airport and you decide whether you're happy or sad. It's got an instant polling type solution. So I recommend that one. Poll everywhere. Anyone tried this? So a simple, straightforward way of creating polls with your audience, yeah? It plugs straight into PowerPoint, so you can have a PowerPoint slide, and then you can have an interactive slide, and it tells people to go to the specific website, and they can answer you directly. So if you have to use an app, and it's, it's reasonably priced as well. Um, Slido is probably one of the best known. Somebody must have used Slido, have they? Okay, well done. How'd you find it? Good? It was good, isn't it? Yeah, one of the things we love about it is being to upvote certain subjects and push them up to the top of the list, and again, reasonably priced. I mean, Attendify is a great app that we've seen used, and we've been using it here today. Uh, going back about five years at IMAX, which is where a lot of these, or EIBTM, which is where a lot of people go um, to see the technology. I have a technology, event technology village in Barcelona, and we went along, and Attendify were there. We had Double Dutch, Event Mobi, all the main players. And I always remember Attendify, they put up a banner that said 395 euros per event. And it was per, per, just, for, just for polling. And there was a queue of like angry sort of all the suppliers going like, you can't do this, you know, you're, you're gutting the market. And their, their focus was now, we want to make it you know, cost effective. We want to make audience engagement simple. So Organized sure, Slido are doing that, as are some of the other technology providers. I won't talk too much about this, but they're on our stand downstairs. If you need a buzzer system, you won't believe that some people need a buzzer system. I tried to make a buzzer system for GSK, like, you know, buzz in. And uh, we tried to make it, and a guy made it in Calcutta and brought it to Kathmandu where we had the event, and it was a fire hazard. 
That's all I can say. It nearly went on fire. He had flashing lights and it was 240 volts and it was like, holy hell, that was like very scary. So I said, there has to be a cheap Chinese solution and I have found it. It's downstairs if you want to play with it. And then moving on into a little bit of the contentious area. What do we think? Is this a bit too scary? If I stick a camera up here and point it at you all, do you like it or not like it? You don't like it, do you? Yeah? But it's too late. It's happening already. If you walk in the mall across the road, they're already scanning your face. Yeah, the video boards are already changing things. Let's add in some other people. Look at it. Now, it's not looking at your biometrics. It doesn't care who you are, but it knows your demographic. It knows if you're engaged. So as a presenter, I can stand up here, have a camera pointing at you lot, and I can engage a whole lot of you instantly. How many times today did you see a show of hands, please? It counts the number of hands. So you get an instant response from who's in the room. And it already exists in retail. So I don't think we have much of a choice. As events people, you can get a full set of biometrics from who's, who's been at your event, what their age group was, by a device that's $300. It's an Arduino board. It's literally as simple as you just stick it in the coffee area and it counts how many people came, how many people went past that area, and it already exists in, in retail. So you're, all you're really doing is taking it from retail into events. So I think that possibly it's going to come, but I see some pushback from it, and I can understand that people think it's uh, got a privacy issues around it, and it will consistently um, be, be kind of managing it. Here we're trying some gesture tracking. So you can see it can track gestures real easy in terms of movement. And this is just one of the most basic ones from, uh, from retail. But there are much more powerful ones as we go through. So imagine some of the things that we can do. I'm just keen to see if you're asleep or not. Um, the event manager blog is probably the core place to go that I know of. If anybody has any other solutions, please let me know. But the event tech bible 2017 and i'm sure julius is working on the next one so it's managed by julius solaris and this is where you can get all of this information in one big download in one go yeah it's to my knowledge completely free of charge as well so you can grab it all so and get get into it and i shouldn't obviously leave this area behind um that old complicated area of how we kind of get together with people we've heard a little bit of chatbots th today Here's a chatbot conversation going on, just to give you a look at it. Now, there's a couple of ones that Julius recommends, a surveybot.io and Survey Sparrow. Any, other, any others that you've tried? Anybody tried one yet? We need to actually sign them up and get, start using them, don't we? Yeah, so have a look at them. These are total conversation going on between, between people. Um, I'm shout out to these guys who were just set up in, uh, in Melbourne and bought an app recently. Um, so we see, we see quite a lot of, anybody use this? There are some customers in New Zealand. Anybody? Any C-Vent? Yeah, how are you finding it? I was a fan of it. Right, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I hear a whole range of different sort of discussions around it being kind of big and cumbersome and also being end-to-end. -end and so I hear a whole range of it. But they certainly cover quite a lot of different areas. They cover a huge amount of areas. But, Claire, what you've also got... You know, there's a whole range of different solutions, isn't there, other than this? I mean, if you can split it down. Yep, eTouch is Eventbrite, yeah. So there's a whole range of different areas. But eTouch is also is, is, is very simple. But these are, they've also got a very interesting supplier network um, where if you're looking for venues with uh, hanging points that are 11.2 meters high in Auckland, then... They, they have it on there. You can go and search for it. So it's, again, free of charge, the C-Vent Supplier Network. So if anything, that's worth looking at. But they recently, la recently just acquired Quick Mobile, which were the second biggest kind of event app, end-to-end -end event app. So they've really sort of sol solidified themselves as kind of a serious, you know, big-scale provider. Um, Double Dutch, did anybody try Double Dutch? They kind of disappeared over, over the past years. But EventMobi is also there, and they're really focused on trying to create the engagement level and also trying to help the presenters. So, for example, if you're a presenter, one of the things you hate is having your audience read your slides while you're presenting them. But in EventMobi, you can, as a presenter, when you get told you're presenting at an event, it will say, at what point in your presentation would you like to release your slides to the audience? That level of detail, I find, is really important for each individual stakeholder of an event. 
there's you, maybe the organizer, there's the presenters, there's the audience, and you've, there's so many different elements to it in terms of putting it together. So that's Event Mobile. Where do you find out about more about this? Well, the Event App Bible 2018 just launched, so it's got all of the suppliers in there. I stopped counting at about 300, so there's a lot, and that's one of the challenges, is that there's too much information. What do you use? Do you use something free? Anybody know anything free? What's a free app that you can use? No? Yeah, there's free gamification apps that you can use out there. There's stuff that they just kind of give away. Poll Everywhere is free for 25 people who are voting with you, for example. So that's how a lot of them do it, isn't it? In-app purchase, yeah? <laughs> yeah, when your kid comes, Dad, I want to buy this sword. Yeah, okay, in-app purchase. So that's what a lot of them will give it away free, and then you'll be tasked with doing it. But the, the most of the information is in there. So just in summary, ladies and gentlemen, I hope I've given you some content. All of the content is there if you want to download it, all the content from today, and all the slides that are there. Grab it and give us some feedback. Don't be afraid to disrupt and change the norm, because presentologies kind of one of the things that we're working on and how we get it across. And if you think about it, you know, that's, if that formula really needs to change because standing up and just boring people to death can be one of the main challenges. Don't be afraid to change that formula and engage the audience and look at some of the interactivity and some of the elements that you can put together. So in the last 16 seconds, I'd like to say if you think about it, you don't really buy a newspaper, you buy news. You don't really buy glasses, you buy vision. You don't really buy a mattress, you buy sleep. And you don't really buy a lamp, you buy light. Well, if you're using presentology, you're not really buying a presentation, you're buying applause. Thank you very much. Um, what happened to QR codes? Where did they go? Somebody deleted them, like CDs. I mean, like I, I used to have CDs in my car, and now my kids are like, hey, Dad, turn on the streaming. I'm like, oh, I've got a CD. What, what's a CD? I mean, like, I saw kids trying to use a cassette tape, but QR codes seem to have gone the same way. You know what the funny thing is? If you grab your phone right now and switch on the camera and point it at that, you immediately get my contact details, and you don't need an app at all. Do you remember we used to need an app? So try it out. I mean, it, it still works. I don't know why we suddenly deleted them and didn't use them anymore. Any reasons, Claire? I don't know why I'm picking on you. You're the, you're the queen of the... I mean, QRs, I think, are still, could be still out there, but it's, it's funny how technology moves fast so quickly. Um, we've got two or three minutes for questions, and you don't have to ask me questions, or you can connect with me. You're, any questions specifically? Hi. Hi. Um, how do you get your speakers or your presenters that are speaking at an event to make their presentations great, like, like these? Great. You, thank you. How do we make our speakers presentations better early early time yeah if you've got time and you've got a brand book for the event yeah which I have on my website you're welcome to it it's a generic brand book stick your logo on it this is our how we're going to present at this event so working with somebody like us to develop the the conference look and feel and how they're going to present and at TED what do they do they make them they put them under pressure if you're not telling a story, if you're not engaging people, then you're not going to be up there. So they create, a, they create a real want for people to be good. Yeah, so if you, and they must send their slides through. Their slides must come through a month beforehand. We know it's not the final version. We coach them and work them on it, and then we also help them. So we get called, you know, kind of presenter concierges, so we work with the presenters on developing how they're going to be. And, you know, it's not taken for red that they're going to be on stage at the event. They apply to speak at the event and then you filter it. You just don't take, oh, this person applied, let's stick them on after lunch. What's he, a presentation guy? Let's stick him on later because nobody will want to go on after him. You know, that sort of thing. So you program your event around who's talking and what they're talking about, but also you look at them. And most people who are good presenters will have YouTube videos now and can send you to, you know, a real video of themselves presenting so you can really vet it. If you want to work with somebody like us, that's, that's what we do. We, we will help you with it. We created our own website around that called thepresentationexperts.com because we wanted a group of people. But, you know, celebrity speakers and those types of guys are all storytellers, so you should be getting good content from them. But if you've got the inherent person who believes that they should have text-heavy slides and read all, and it's all about the data, then they need educated on what we're expecting. The big help here is TED. 
Ted has set the standard, if you like, of what a good presentation is. 20 minutes, 18 minutes, you know, keep it simple, tell a story, three facts in it. That's the sort of stuff that you want to be doing. And then it's engaging for the audience and they love it and you create a conversation. Yeah? Although I have to notice, I have to say, you guys are a pretty tough audience. Yeah? Have you noticed that? Yeah? Why are you such a tough audience? Because you've seen it all before, haven't you? Yeah, you don't want to stand up and massage somebody's shoulders, do you? Yeah, you've seen it all. You've seen all the engagement stuff. So for people like Jason, who's doing a great job, it's tough work, you know, trying to get event managers engaged. You know what I mean? Like I'm going, I'm speaking at an event next week for EAs and PAs, and it's, it's so much different, yeah? So good that you're tough. Challenge us. We need to find new ways to be engaging and be as engaging as possible. Yeah, so thanks for your question. Did I answer it? Yeah, there's a couple of different ways. Any other questions? Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. AdSense is the name of it. Just you know, it's um, it's Ad Mobilize is the is the American uh, connection. But I can connect you with them um, directly and get you connected with them. But they, it's just the box that that connects, and it's being used in retail as it is at the moment. So if anyone knows any other solution, then let us know. No? Did you try it? <laughs> Clicker on the door works as well. It does. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't really tell you if they're sort of, you know, if they're, you know, what the, you know, 30 middle-aged ladies think, you know, which is what, what the app will obviously do. But um, it is amazing. I tried it a couple of times. You can, actually, the software is free to download, and it uses the camera on your, on, your, on your iPhone, and you just point it at people, and it's amazing the stats you get. Just pointing it at people, it really does work. It's, it's scary how, how quick, how accurate it is. It's really annoying when it tells you you're a middle-aged female. That's the only problem with it. You know, and you're an angry middle-aged female, you know, and you pointed it at the dog. Yep. Are you, um, how do you approach like, the change in the way people consume? You know, going away from traditional uh, ways of presenting, the PowerPoints and the packaging versus uh, the average attention span of two and a half to yep. three minutes? I, I suck in my breath because I'd love to change it everywhere, and I know how to do it. Okay, do you know what the craziest one is? Break in the room. We are living a channel hopping world. Imagine the scene, and I've seen this: 600 people, plenary style, a massive ultra-wide screen with main presentation going on. Everybody's very happy, and then everybody's ready for breakout sessions. What does everybody get ready to do? Move. Don't move. Stay where you are. We don't want you to move. Up comes. Six pips, six picture in picture, six 16 by nine pictures. The AV guys are running all six presentations at once. Out on stage comes six presenters, all with headsets, wireless headsets. Everybody puts on their wireless headset. And what have they got? So they're using simultaneous, simultaneous translation system. And you've got channels one, two, three, four, five, six. So you can stay there and watch five minutes of this, two minutes of this. And you can literally call break in the room. And I thought, when they told me about it, I thought, you mean no one's going to go anywhere? We're just going to sit there and we're going to channel hop? And I said, people are going to hate it, man. It's gonna, no one's going to like this. You know what the reaction was? People loved it. People were like, I watched two minutes of that one, three minutes of this one, four minutes of this one. What does it do? It changes the focus away from the presenters. For all too often, presenters are megalomaniacal. We are like, you have to listen to me. I know everything. But the wisdom of crowds says is that the audience are the ones we should be focusing on. The more we focus on the audience, the more we get them engaged, then the better. Turn the spotlight round on the audience. Find out what they want to know and how they want to do it. Crowdsource the content. Ask people, what do you want to talk about and who do you want to talk about it? Do you think they're going to come to your event? Hell yes, because they designed it with you. So there are several crowdsourcing solutions you can find, and I hope that's answering your question, but that's my go-to there. Break in the room was awesome. It wasn't terrible, and I thought on paper it would be terrible. Thank you, Ali. I'm done. Thank you, guys. I'm here if you want to chat for the next couple of days.